So, hello, welcome to the Old Golden Black for this review of Wolves 1, Crystal Palace 0. Another great result, another step in the direction that we're going, which is upwards. Uh, I think, realistically now, European football could be a goal for the team. Uh, I think the way that we played against Southampton and against um, Palace, two sort of mediocre bottom third of the, of the Premier League teams, we played like a team who are looking for European football. And I think the players that we've got, I think it is a realistic expectation on the squad now. Um, but just generally the way that we played yesterday, we weren't great for large spells. I think Palace played very well and were able to... Uh, they beat us in midfield a little bit. I think Martino and Neves were... They were composed, but they weren't as fluid as they have been in previous games when they were able to create chances at will. Um, we were limited to only two shots on target, I think, one of those being the goal. Uh, Hennessy played, well, Hennessy played like Hennessy does. He made one decent save in the first half and then was beaten at his near post for Doherty's goal. But Doherty's goal was uh, arguably the best goal I think we've scored so far this season in terms of the movement and the off the ball and Jimenez weight of pass uh, to bring Doherty in I thought was tremendous it was a, a shame really that we couldn't extend that lead I think every win bar the Southampton win that we've had has been nervy at the end even though we've been dominant in those performances I think we should have Cavaliero hit the bar of course could have made it 2-0 and easy but the chances that we had in the first half Jimenez should have scored um, uh, Hennessy pulling off that good save and then as well he had one where he'd sort of uh, Jota had put him through and he dragged his shot wide where he should have done better with that. Just to touch on Jota as well, I'm really concerned about him at the moment. And he's, I don't know whether he's exhausted or whether he's not confident in himself, but he's not the same player that we saw for large spells of last season. He's, um, his first touch is poor, his passing is poor, uh, his tracking back is causing damage because he's giving away fouls and things like that. I don't know whether he needs a little spell out of the team, a little break perhaps, and Cavaliero now he's fit and looking sharp, could come into the team and add something a little bit more. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below about that. I think I think it's time for a change. Eight games in a row uh, that we've played the same team in the league uh, and perhaps there is a little bit of fatigue setting in now, but... The strangest part of the game yesterday was Sace coming on at, at centre forward. It was a very strange move, particularly when you had players like Bonatini, Gibbs White, and Traore still on the bench at that point in the game. Whether it was because uh, Mamadou Sacco for Palace was winning every single header against uh, Costa all afternoon, uh, and they just wanted somebody to try and hold the ball up front, but it didn't really work. Um, so Sace now has played centre back, centre mid, and centre forward for Wolves. Uh, so it's just the goalkeeper position that he needs to fill. Talking of the goalkeeper position, uh, Rui Patricio, two world-class saves, very close together, where he, the second one as well, the first one was a, a decent save, he parried it out into the group of players that were there, and then, I can't remember who it was, the Palace player, but everybody just assumed that it was in, but he sort of just threw himself up and it hit him. A tremendous save, really, really great. And that's the difference as well between us and other promoted teams or other teams in that middle of the table pack is that we've got a world-class goalkeeper who's, again, saved us two points yesterday um, and against Southampton, didn't have much to do, but United, he won us the point there. He's certainly had a massive hand in uh, all the points that we've won so far this season. So I'm very confident now going into the next two games against Watford, who lost again yesterday, and Brighton, who are hit and miss. Before then, the Spurs and the Arsenal game at the beginning of November, which could be... See, <laughs> I've been telling people this uh, this week that those two games could be like the Villa game was last year in the, you know, the watershed moment of the season. We sort of realised the the capabilities of the team in that, in that uh, game against Villa, and it could very much be the same against Spurs if we were to win that game. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. Sorry as well for the lack of videos recently. Uh, I think I have explained in a video, but I have moved house now. I'm, I'm currently in the IKEA car park, just about to buy some furniture and stuff. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, I'll be back to normal and reviewing and previewing games and having the live streams on Wednesdays as normal. But anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.